Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and I'm back with another plywood and two by four project build. Except that this isn't actually two by fours, it's two by twos in plywood, so close enough. This easy plywood project would be perfect for storing and displaying your records if you have any. I don't have any records. Your books, if you have any, I do have a lot of those. And it would also be great for storing away blankets or pillows or in a closet for t-shirts, jeans, hoodies, whatever. But no matter how you plan on using it, it was really easy to build. And I've got the full plans over on woodshopdiaries.com and also I will link those directly below. So if you're ready to see how it all came together, let's go. I feel like I'm coming back to my roots, pulling out the plywood sheets again here, but I really do love working with it. So first thing was first, I pulled out my plywood sheet. I cut down two strips using my Craig Rip Cut and circular saw. For this project, you only need just barely over a half sheet, and you could likely make this from scraps if you have any random offcuts left from your past projects. I actually cut these pieces down for a totally different project a while back, then changed my mind. So let's skip ahead a few weeks. Okay, it's obviously turned off incredibly cold um, for like the next two days here. So got the coat, got the sock monkey hat, we are pushing through it, but it's supposed to be like 80 this weekend. So I don't know, the weather's nuts. Anyway, I've got this uh, plywood that I've already cut down. I was going to use it for my three drawer dresser several weeks ago now, um, but I ended up switching it to use white oak for that build. So I had these pieces cut and they're not the exact width that I need, but they're close. So I'm gonna just go ahead and use this. I'm gonna run it to the table saw to get it 12 inches wide. I ripped these strips down to 12 inches wide on the table saw and you could cut your plywood strips to whatever width that you want. The width of these pieces will determine the depth of the shelf. So make it wider for deeper shelves and narrower for shallower shelves. I trimmed the plywood strips down to their final sizes on the miter saw. The plans that I've linked below will detail the exact measurements and cut diagrams. But basically, I cut 10 pieces about 14 and 3 quarter inches long, 3 pieces 8 inches long, and 3 more pieces 7 and a quarter inches long. Then I applied iron-on edge banding to the edges that will be exposed in the final project. This included the front edges plus one side edge of both the 14 and 3 quarter inch pieces and the 8 inch pieces. You'll see how the sides are exposed in assembly in just a minute. After the edge banding was on, I sanded everything well before assembling. I kept assembly super simple here and just used screws. Now you could assemble this using dowels, pocket holes, half laps, whatever. I used this Craig quick flip to pre-drill and countersink holes to insert the screws into. Now I'm not going to lie to you, I planned to use wood glue on all of the joints, but it was incredibly messy and I just didn't want to deal with sanding glue squeeze out from all of the corners, especially on plywood since the veneer is so thin. So I used wood glue on the first joint, then I didn't bother with it for the rest of the build. It's probably best to use it for everything, but I'm going to take my chances here. The screws alone are holding well. Also, I know a bunch of you will ask how I ensured my pieces were square and basically I just kept a speed square handy to check periodically before driving the screws and mostly I just eyeballed it. Now I assembled one full box as you can see and basically just overlapped each corner so that it made a perfect square. I set this aside then assembled three quote unquote partial boxes. Basically, this was two of the larger panels made into a V shape, and then I added one seven and a quarter inch piece on one side and an eight inch piece on the other side. Notice how the short sides are attached. The edges overlap differently so that despite the fact that these sides are different lengths, the overall dimensions of the box are the same. I know a bunch of you will also ask why I didn't clamp each piece and to be honest I actually tried to but the clamps were not holding my pieces square no matter how much I messed with them. So honestly things went a lot smoother and stayed a lot squarer. Is squarer a word? Anyway, 
Everything stayed a lot more square without them. Feel free to clamp, don't clamp, do whatever works best for you. Freehanding the assembly seemed to work best for me. I made three of these so that there were four total boxes to the shelf. To hide the screws, I glued some dowels into the countersunk holes. And after they had dried, I trimmed them off with a flush cut blade in my oscillating saw, then sanded everything smooth. I wanted this shelf to have a two-tone look, so I stained two of the boxes black and left the other two their natural wood color. However, to do this, it's much easier to go ahead and stain now before assembling. Of course, you can stain, paint, finish however you like. While the stain had some time to soak in and dry, I trimmed down my 2x2 two two legs. I wanted these to be installed at a slight angle, so I adjusted my miter saw to 22 and a half degrees and cut the four legs at this angle on each end. Notice that the angles are opposite each other and not parallel. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know the best way to attach these. Like, I'm going to use glue and screws, but I don't know how to like hold these in place. Now installing these was a bit tricky at first since it's difficult to keep these in place while drilling and driving the screws. What I ended up finding worked easiest for me was to mark where to install each leg. I installed them so that the top point of each leg was 8 inches from the bottom corner of the bottom shelf. Then I could hold that leg in place while I pre-drilled a hole from the inside of the shelf. After the hole was pre-drilled, then I could add some glue and drive the two inch long screw, line up the holes and tighten it in place. Now I don't recommend skipping glue here, but I do recommend pre-drilling before adding the glue as the wet glue makes things a lot more difficult to hold the leg in place while pre-drilling. Now all that was left was attaching all the boxes together. I did this on the floor because it was a lot easier to access everything. I started at the bottom and worked my way up, centering each box, then pre-drilling and driving two inch wood screws, one towards the front and one towards the back. You could certainly countersink and plug these screw holes with dowels as well, just like I did with the boxes, but I didn't since they're on the inside and will be covered with books and other items anyway. Also, the real reason is because I was running out of time and camera battery at this point. So after the top box was screwed in place, it was finished and ready for use. Now I'm going to go back and add poly to the whole shelf at some point, but for now it's good enough for sharing with you all. I really hope you enjoyed watching this project come to life. I really thought this shelf design would be a fun build, even though I don't really need it for anything, but I'll find something to do with it. For now, it's a great place to store a few extra blankets, books, even like shoes. If you'd like to build your own, grab the plans linked below and be sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up with all the latest projects and plans. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, happy building.